<clears throat> hello, hello. Can everyone hear me? Hello. There's Carrie. I see Carrie. Can you hear me? Hmm. We can hear you great. Hi Delena. Hi Misty. I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes for people to log in. Kelly. Hi, guys. So excited to be here. Hey, hey. I don't hear anything or see anything. Carrie, can you help alter Joe? Hi, Debbie. All right. I'm going to wait another minute. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Welcome to Live with Prima. I'm Adrienne Ford. I'm like, so excited to be here. Um, it's been a long time coming. I'm like, wow, I'm actually here. I'm like, oh. every day goes by. I'm like, February 20th. Oh, it's getting closer. So I'm really excited to be sharing with you one of my layouts from CHA tonight. Uh, right before I get started, I want to give some announcements. It's okay, Adrian. Okay. Sorry, I'm just reading here. I'm making sure that you guys can hear me okay. And I'm going to go slow to give my camera some time to pick me up. Okay, so I want to give some announcements here before I forget. Uh, the next Live with Prima class is February 25th with Lee Moore Weber using the new InstaScrap collection at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And also I want to mention the Art Venture Canada, which is April 11th through the 13th, Cornwall, Ontario, Canada, East Coast. All-inclusive weekend, including accommodations, food, meals, goodie bags, and more. I heard the goodie bags are really awesome. Um, there's going to be six amazing classes with Lee Moore, Jamie, and Carrie. Project samples are coming soon. I think I've seen a couple little sneak peeks here and there on Prima's Facebook page. There's a limited s spots available, so you need to book now for only $50 down. That's awesome. So check out this event at Prima Marketing Flowers fan page under the events section. All right, awesome. So now we put that aside. All right. <laughs> I did. Yes, we're good. We are good to go, Carrie. Okay, so tonight I want to share with you, well, I should say my name again. My name's Adrian Ford. I'm on the Prima design team. And when Carrie asked me to guest design at uh, One Live with Prima tonight, I was like, my jaw dropped and hit the floor. And I was like, ah. Uh, uh, I don't I don't even know what to say it was so it's really been exciting um, the whole process really looking forward to sharing with you my layout tonight so first off I want to share with you the theme it's about um, sharing your story your picture story um, I'm going to be sharing a photo of my grandmother and my beautiful daughter and each thing in this picture means something to me. My grandmother, my daughter, um, 
just the memories of my grandparents home just it's all encompassing and I want to share with you tonight how you can pick your elements and embellishments to complete your photo and send a message without having to even you don't even have to do any journaling or add a title just the embellishments and flowers speak for themselves just the textures of the flowers um, and I'm going to be showing you what each flower means and represents towards the photo later. So I'm going to share with you the products that we're going to be using tonight. All right, let me check here. Oh. Okay. Hold on one second. My phone keeps reminding me that I have text messages. Okay. All right, so let's share the products here. So first off, what? I don't have my layout with me, but I have a little printout. You can see it online. I'm just using that as a reference of where I placed all my embellishments just in case I forget. So I'm going to start with the stencil. This is called... Um, drawing a blank here, a stain, and it is number 572181. It's a 12 by 12 stencil. It's awesome. It looks like paint splatters. I'm going to be featuring some of the new stationer's desk tonight. Uh, I love this. It's vintage. It goes so well with the photo of my grandma and everything that she means to me. So I thought that this paper was perfect. Really pretty and it is number 813819 so I'm going to put those aside and now on to the exciting things I love the flowers and the texture so I'm going to be using some of the new trims tonight this is 573607 paintables so pretty you can do so much with these and this number is 813987. These are awesome. These are some of my favorite things from this new release um, is the wooden embellishments. There was some that were whitewashed that are so cool. And then there's these that are stained. Um, they're like a darker wood, very vintage. Um, you can do so much with them. I'm actually going to be using these butterflies. I'm going to be using all four of them out of the package, and it's number 572877. We're going to be using the interlude flowers, 561420. We're going to be using the red ones. I'm going to use four of those. Lamia, these are from the summer release. There's some blacks, there's like a, a charcoal gray, and then there's like an off-white that's almost like a pale gray color. Really pretty. And those are 571566. Five, six. One of my favorite flowers from this release are the Adelins. I'm trying to put them up here so you can see them. These are the loose. I have, I'm using two of them. I hope you can see them. Oh, they are so gorgeous. They are so pretty. They're about an inch and a quarter in diameter. They have this cute little pearl center. They're adorable and they go with um, memories of my grandmother so I thought those were perfect too. Jute, cute. Canvas flowers, the little stamens are so adorable in the center. 574819. All right and I got some, my paintables. They are all cut out and ready to go. I fussy cut them ahead of time because I don't do so well fussy cutting. So <laughs> I didn't want to make myself look silly in front of the camera. So I did that ahead of time. I took my time. Um, gesso, super heavy. Sea sponge, scissors, paint. Paint I'm using Luminart Silk in Carmen. We're going to be watering it down just a little bit. And my Spanish moss. Um, I also have foam adhesive. I usually buy this at Target in the hardware section. And I think that's it. So I'm going to set all of this aside. And we are going to rock. Let's rock. 
I always say that when we're leaving with my kids, when we're heading out the door, I'm like, let's rock. And they go, let's walk. It's so cute. All right, let me check in on everybody. I can't like a kindergartner. Me too. Oh, Hi, Song. Aw. Jackie. Aw. Thanks for coming, everyone. Shanna. Oh, cool. All right, so let's get into this and get started because I'm already 10 minutes in. I can't believe it. I've been talking for 10 minutes already. Okay, so I'm going to offset my stencil. I'm going to pan down. I almost forgot to pan down. Can you believe that? Okay. Got to make sure it is not crooked. Sorry, guys. Ugh. Sorry. Don't want to make you dizzy. Okay. Can you see me? Okay. So I'm going to offset my stencil, my 12 by 12 stain stencil, and there's a border to it. So I have to offset it because in my original layout, I had it the whole way to the edge. I'm going to about a quarter of an inch off, and then I'm going to place it right there on the edge the end on the bottom and I'm going to use take my sea sponge and my super heavy gesso and I'm just going to start creating lots of texture in my background okay so I'm going to do lots of upward motion it's going to be really heavy pressure as I dabble on my gesso love gesso it's one of my favorite things to use you want to get all the little tiny holes in here there's lots of tiny ones and you can see I hope you can see there is some serious texture going on already really pretty the reason why I choose to use a sea sponge is that the holes in the sponge actually create some type of suction and it really gives lots of peaks which I love. It really gives a lot of texture without having to do a whole lot extra. Ah, I'm trying to hold it down here. I'm trying to follow my layout as a guide. Don't want to miss anything. This is so easy, guys. Um, it's so easy to do. It is messy, but it is worth it. All right, so I'm going in here. <clears throat> you can go in and always add more. I'm trying to read what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Canadians. Okay. I'm not going to do a whole lot up here because it's going to be just covered. I am big into conserving my products, so I try not to use my mediums where it's going to be covered because that's just wasting. Okay. All right. I think that I have it about where I want it. <coughs> okay. I'm going to do a little tiny bit right here. And this is always the tricky part. I never know where to put my stencil. I don't want it to get ruined, but I also want to do a little bit more. So I kind of hold it up. I'm sure you guys have been in the same predicament. Okay, I'm putting my stencil down. I'm going to wipe my hands real quick. All right. Next up, we're going to whip out our Luminart Silk. I love the Luminart acrylic paint and I'll tell you why. It is so versatile. It almost can act as a uh, watercolor if you water it down enough and it shimmers. I chose to use um, the paint for this particular layout instead of like a mist or a watercolor because the acrylic paint tends to sit on the surface a little bit better and gives more of a darker texture. Texture is probably not the best word for it. I'm trying to make sure my Adelins don't get paint on them. I'm going to put them back in the bucket. Okay, so I have my Carmen 
it matches my grandmother's shirt just perfectly. And that's why I chose it. Isn't that perfect? I really wanted to bring out the color in her shirt and that's why I chose the red flowers. This morning I just put some paint and some water into a little little jar and I'm going to use this to flick on my paint with my paintbrush. And you can add any any amount of paint that you wish. Make it as heavy as you want. I don't want it to be that heavy. I don't want it to have globs. And I just want to do real light across. Just a little bit. There's a little bit too much, so I'm going to just kind of and I'm kind of just following my layout as a guide. Okay, going down here and doing a little bit here in the corner. And the red just adds just enough. Just you want really tiny dots because you don't want it to overpower everything else. Because red is whoo, in your face. Okay. <laughs> Everybody having a good time? You look like you're having such a good time chatting it up. Awesome. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to close up my paint. I am done with the paint. And I need to put it away before I spill it. I don't know how many times I've I have spilled paint on a layout in in mid process and I have a conniption. <coughs> okay just cleaning up my workspace. Oh, you should see my workspace. This is all white. I actually covered it in white butcher paper. Um, it is, my desk is a disaster. It's, in my, it's just gesso. Just a layer. I'm sure some of you can relate to that as well. Okay, so we have this. I'm trying to get it real pretty. Okay, so we're done with the background and you can do anything you want. You can do faux stitching around the corners, you can distress your corners, do whatever you would like. Um, I wanted to keep my main focus on my embellishments for this particular project so I did not do a whole lot of background work. That's typically my favorite part is my background. Um, but I chose to do embellies. So I switched out so I could save on drying time and I have a layout that's already dried and ready to go. Alright, so on to our embellishments. So I'm going, I picking up my photo, okay, and I already marked where I want the photo to go. And I'm going to offset it a little bit because I don't want it, I don't want those dark lines to show. So I'm just going to lay it down and I'm going to put some foam adhesive on the back and that's my first step. So I'm laying the groundwork for this layout. Mm. Okay. I use a lot of foam adhesive. The foam dots used to cut it for me and now not so much anymore. And I'm just going to lay it down. I'm not going to glue it down just, just yet because I do add a lot of dimension and I might need to add more foam adhesive on the back later. So I'm just going to set it down and put it in place and it'll be right there. Okay? So my goal tonight is to share with you why I chose the, the elements that I did. And first I want to lay down um, my jute flowers. I'm going to start with the big flowers first. Actually, I'm, I am going ahead of myself. I need to lay down my trim first. That's really important because I am going to glue the trim down. And I'm just going to take these and I'm going to line it up. Now this photo, I had to use a different size photo when it printed out and it is a little shorter than the original. So we're just going to go with it and see what happens. And this one's going to be fussy with me. 
it's all bent in the corner. I hate that when my my embellishments give me a fight, give me a run for my money. I am going to glue this down here. And I, what I like about the glue is I do pull stuff up. I have a hard time laying things down and not gluing them because they're all moving around and stuff and at least I know that I can have a little bit of time. This Fabri-Tac does dry pretty quick. Okay, I'm going to take some trim on the other side and I don't need a lot right here. Anybody have any questions so far? Talking about tornadoes. <laughs> okay. It looks like your guys are having a good time in there. Okay. So I got my trim down and now I'm going to start with the big flowers. All right, big flowers first. I chose, I'm going to tell my story. I, my grandfather, he passed away this past summer. He was a carpenter and he worked a lot with wood and um, their house was a constant for me growing up. We, we lived in the same town and um, I was over there quite a lot and these these canvas flowers, the stamens in particular, just remind me of the wood of my grandfather. See I'm just kinda in your head you look at a picture and you see who's in it and you just hold on. Oh okay. I didn't dry my gesso. I did a layout earlier today and I would had it all dried and ready to go as a replacement. So I have two here and one was already dried. I, I talked too much and I wanted to make sure I had enough time so I didn't dry. Um, I already had one all ready to go for you guys because I don't like to watch paint dry. <laughs> all right. Sorry guys if I missed your questions. Oh, thank you, Misty. Kelly is a flower master. Yes, she is. Okay, back to my grandfather and the flowers. Okay, so the stamens really remind me of the wood and his home. He used to make these beautiful musical instruments, and they're just laying all over the house, and this, these particular flowers reminded me of that. So I'm telling my, I'm weaving this story together as I go along, okay? So next I'm going to add the Adelins. And these Adelins remind me of my grandmother's blouses. Just so soft and white. She would wear this one particular white blouse. I think my mom's on here watching and I'm sure she knows. There's this one blouse that's just silky and I just remember sitting in church with her growing up and just it just brings back wonderful memories. So that's why I chose that flower. And I am finding nice little places. Oh, I completely, I always neglect these clusters in the bottom corner here. I always do that. I gotta start a cluster over here. <clears throat> okay. Let's get to it down here. Okay. We're making good time here. All right. Let me just pan up here and show you real quick. See, it's coming together real nice. Okay? All right. So I got my Adelins. They remind me of my grandmother's blouse. Now, I mean, when you go to do your layout, just look at your picture and people that are in it and what they're wearing and the colors and the textures in the background and, you know, what they mean to you everybody has a story and every photo has a story that's why I find photos so beautiful um, and so special uh, so it, even if it's a baby you want to use soft soft fabrics and just really airy and fresh and new like a newborn baby 
Okay, so I got my Adeline down here. I'm going to go in with, I'm trying to decide here if I want to do, I'm going to do the Lamia second. I'm just going to stick them in, tuck them in here and there. Okay, I'm not going to glue some of these down quite yet. And this one, I am going to have to boost up my, my photo here a little bit. More, here comes more foam. And I will glue this down here. Probably not when you guys are here. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start gluing some of these down so they stay put. Just going to add a little dot so I can have a little wiggle room if I need to adjust. Sorry guys, I got a lot of stuff going on here. I don't like a mess on my table. Okay. I'm going to put one up here, and actually I'm going to put one of the small guys up here, and then this down here. Now I use these dark colors to just give it a nice contrast, because I don't have a whole lot of black, and I wanted to kind of play off the dark color in the photo. So I didn't want to use black, so I chose the darker gray. And this one's kind of going to hang down here somewhere. Okay, next up we got the interludes. And I love that the interludes have a mix of the pinks and the reds, so you get a choice. Okay, so I'm going to tuck this in. I'm going to use one of the tiny ones. Sorry guys, I'm just still trying to get my bearings here. One's going to hang down here. Now I don't know how I did it, but I did have some um, different, they were all the same reds when I did my CHA uh, layout, but they're not all the same color, but that's okay. Because you guys get the general gist. I use, I, I have a hard time because I like to be matchy matchy about everything. clean tables. <laughs> okay, coming along. Now I'm going to, I think I have four. I used four grays, four reds, two Adeline, and two J. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside because I believe that I am done with those for now. I'm just kind of taking everything off my table that's not necessary because I get overwhelmed when my workspace is a mess. You should see me at CHA time. It's I'm I'm a disaster. I <laughs> I'm constantly doing this. <sighs> I can't concentrate. Okay, I'm gonna lay down my leaves. All right. I fussy cut my leaves out of the paintables. You can paint the paintables. I particularly enjoyed them this time to be in the raw, if that's what you want to call it. Um, just the, the gray just really went well with my gray flowers and gives a nice little pop. Okay, I cut these two, one, two out. They were attached to one another. I don't know how. Um, I just love making good use of all all my materials. So I'm going to stick this up here. Okay, I'm going to need some foam adhesive for this one flower. Um, sometimes I rip them in half. So telling your uh, photo story for me is mostly using a combination of textures colors that complement the photo and 
using your flowers to your advantage. Um, having a particular theme or, you know, if a particular flower reminds you of something, again, like the baby or, you know, the vintage stamens remind me of my pap's wooden instruments. Okay? So this is going to go up here like this. I'm just going to tuck them all together and scrunch them. I'm just going to go... Okay. It's 10 o'clock already. Can't believe it. Okay. Having so much fun. You guys having fun? Anybody have any more questions? I know that there's a delay. You guys are really funny. I see hoarders and... Okay. I got another leaf going on up here that I need to tuck in. All right. And we just like scrunching some of the flowers, just make them not so rigid. Um, I like to overlap them to make them really look like they're in a garden. Okay, I'm trying to prop some of them up with foam adhesive here. And I'm really particular about my placement, so I'm going to take a little extra time and just make sure that's how I want it and fluff them and make them look all pretty. Not like they weren't in the first place. Prima just does this amazing job of giving so many versatile choices with flowers and, you know, the fabric. I love mixing and matching, you know, paper and fabric flowers together. They do such a good job. Okay, let me show you real quick how it, l it looks so far. Okay. And that nice little cluster in the, in the bottom. Sometimes I don't even do a cluster in the bottom. I just skip it. I don't know if that's playing by the rules, but I don't really play by the rules. <laughs> it's probably bad of me. I missed I missed some flowers. Silly me. Here I am throwing my flowers down here. Oh. Aw. Deb and PA. We should get together. You're only 30 minutes from me? Ah. Oh, we gotta get together. Seriously, I have a hard time finding anybody in this area who wants to scrapbook with me. Um my stepsister and my brother's wife scrapbook but they live about three hours west of here so I can't scrapbook with them and Philadelphia area where I live nobody wants to scrapbook I can't find there's no like brick and mortar stores it's really sad makes me so sad so Deb and PA we need to meet up Yes, I will show the stencil again. And where did I put it? Okay, let me get the stencil. Let me find something here that I can show it. Because it's kind of hard to see because I got gesso smeared all over it. Look at that. I didn't clean my stencil. It is stain. That's the name of it. It's 12 by 12. I think I have it upside down. No. Isn't that cool? looks like paint splatters and the number again is five seven two one eight one you can do so much with this you could do like outline them that would take forever but I love outlining even the intricate ones the little tiny stuff does anybody have any other questions I'll take a couple minutes
guys are so funny. Looks like you're having fun. <laughs> the gesso is going to harden on there. I have a really hard time getting it off sometimes. I have to literally get it in the bathtub and scrub it. And you got to be really careful with the more intricate ones because you don't want to um, tear them. The the Prima stencils are really, really, um, they're hardcore. But you do still have to be careful. Okay. All right. So I need to find out where. Okay. All right. So we're coming along real well here. All right. Let's put my. I love these little gray, off, off gray colors in the middle. Let me see if I can show you. There's like a gray undertone. They're so pretty. They just add so much. Just a little delicate touch. Just plays off the deeper gray flowers. All right. So I got all these glued down. I'm going to glue this guy down. I'm calling them guy. I've been yapping, so my glue is drying. Yikes. Thank you, Jackie. All right, coming along. Glue, glue, glue. Glue some more. I love this Fabri-Tac glue. All right, so that looks like it's just hanging down. So pretty. All right. I think everything is about set here. Okay, so put a little more here. I'm going to go in and add a little bit more of the red. My paintbrush is getting paint everywhere. Ugh! I'm going to add just a little bit more paint up here in this left hand corner, just a teeny tiny bit. Just a couple drops. Okay. Just bring it all together. The red droplets really make those, the red flowers and her shirt pop. Oh. It's one thing about the Luminart paint. It gets so stained in your skin. Okay, so I got all those down. These paintables are awesome. All right, so I gotta make sure everything's glued down. Okay, we're good. We are good. I'm gonna take my paint, paintable, my last one, and just going to tuck it in and I need to add just a little more. Okay. Oh, I got red paint on the leaf. It's going to annoy me. Okay. Well, this is a teachable moment. You can hide it or just go with it. And I'm just going to go with it. Okay? Remember, ladies, it doesn't have to be perfect, even though I want it to be at times. Okay. I want this guy to come down a little bit. Pulling stuff up already. Look at me. This one needs to be put up with a little more foam.
the foam tape is amazing to use. There goes, there's some red on my other leaf. I'll fix that later. I made a little bit of a boo-boo. I don't know, but it's smeared up here. That's okay. Yes, the foam adhesive is really nice. It just makes everything just pop. Makes it hard to put into a page protector, but I I've never been one to put them in page protectors anyways. So okay, so I think we are about done. Okay, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take this paintbrush off this table before we get any more paint on anything. Okay, clearing things off. Anybody have any questions on the products that I used tonight? I agree. I have a hard time putting multiple photos on a page, Carrie, but I need to try that. I need to challenge myself to do that more. You can come up with some really cool designs if you use multiple pictures. I'm just reading some of your comments. Oh, the three-in-one fabric tack is good too. Yep, it does smell bad. Song. <laughs> okay, so I'll show you what we have so far. It's really pretty, really vintage. Just really. Perfect for a heritage photo. Got the nice, um, you got the canvas flowers and this beautiful trim. This burlap trim is so pretty. Okay. All right. Now I need to tuck in my Spanish moss. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with that right now. I want on my layout I had two little butterflies down at the bottom hanging down. There was uh, the Spanish moss was hanging down in just like a little strip. I don't know if you can see it. Just let it dangle right here. It's hard to see. Sorry guys. Spanish moss is blending in with my background. Anyways you get the idea so I let a little bit hang down. I like the opening with my package because it kind of lets me pull just a little, just enough. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to add. Now this Spanish moss adds so much texture; it's amazing, and it is dirt cheap. You can get it at the dollar store for a dollar. I get. I find so many cool texture things except it gets everywhere. Kind of have to blow it off. Okay, so my butterflies are going to hang off of these. Come on, come on. They're not wanting to cooperate. Okay, what's going to happen is I'm going to take just a little bit of glue. You can even, um, I know there's like little tiny glue sticks that look like pens or markers and just really get it to adhere to the paper because you don't want them flying anywhere because it's going to kind of make your butterfly unruly. So I just kind of glue it down a little so it sticks. All right. Just get my Spanish moss plugged in there. Oh, you should get some altered gel. You should tear it out. Okay, really cool. It's coming along. I'm going to tuck in some here. Okay. I'm adding more in some spots and less in others. Mostly I'm just going off what my lay original layout did. Okay. Alright. 
Oh, another cool thing that you can do with the Spanish moss is you can paint it. I've done that before. I wear gloves and just kind of get messy. Just play around with it. Just really adds so much texture. Okay. We're almost done. We're almost to the finish line. I'm just going to add a little bit up here. It's everywhere. It's all over the place now. That's okay. Almost done. blowing it off. And then I want to add some down in the corner. Now you can add a title. I don't, sometimes I just don't do titles. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a time thing or by the time I get to the title at the end, I'm just, I don't know, lazy and don't want to do it. <laughs> sometimes I just I think this photo speaks for itself in a lot of ways. I'll just scribble, you know, a date and a little message on the back and just let the picture and the elements speak for themselves. Okay. I'm just going to add a little more. I probably added a little more than I did at the, in the original, but I'm just going with it. Alright, so lastly, let's take this Spanish moss off of here. Ugh, what a mess. Let's just move it to the side. Here, let me pan up here. Okay. Can you see? I'm not sure if you can see. Let me see if I can get... Look at that. So much it pops. I'm just reading what you're writing. Oh my gosh, you guys are so funny. <laughs> Alright. Butterflies. Last thing, and then we are done. All right, I got my four butterflies. I'm just going to tuck them in where they need to be. Seriously, these icons are amazing. I love them. I want all of them. And I want like multiple ones. I wish I could have like 15 packs of the butterflies alone. They're adorable. They're so intricate. I'll show you in a minute what they look like. Okay, so I got my glue. And I'm just going to let them lay like they're kind of floating. Will I frame this layout? I probably won't. What I end up doing is, hold on, let me put this butterfly, let me find a spot for him. What I actually do is I just take some tape and just tape it to the wall and just display it around our house. I have um, framed a couple of layouts, uh, mostly of my kids' baby pictures, um, but I haven't put any of them up. They are nice to frame. You could probably get some cheap frames. Don't even put any glass in it. Just let it pop, um, pop out. And so I have all the butterflies, and then I got one last piece to do. Let's move this back here, and I'm get the ink bottle that says "Love." I love this photo. I love my grandma. She's so cute. I love my baby girl. I'm just going to tuck it in there, down at the bottom. That's also so vintage. I love it. It's very
very looks very much like an heirloom family heirloom just little trinkets laying around my grandparents have lots of little trinkets around their house that have been sitting there for so many years all right like to little fluff my butterflies and we are done look at that okay let's get a little close up and that's pretty much it thank you guys thank you so much you guys made my night I feel so happy playing along with you I hope that you took away some interesting information that you can use on your projects um, the products are amazing the new C CHA release products I know some of you might not have gotten them yet the stores are getting them in um, I've just been prowling to see who has some things available and thank you thanks so much guys <laughs> Um, I know the Blue Moon Scrapbooking has it. I know that Cherry on Top has a lot of stuff. I know that they have the new flowers out. I th I'm pr I've been prowling to see who has what. And so yeah, get the jutes and get the adelines. The adelines are so pretty. You can miss those. You can do tons of stuff. You can miss those jutes too. And the interludes, they're, they're, um, I think they're from at least three, three releases ago. I remember when they came out, but I don't know when. And the Lamia was from the summer release, summer 2013. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming, guys. I am so happy. I'm so happy that you all came and supported me. It, I'm going to go to bed smiling. Last night I slept two hours. I am ready to go to bed. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to pan back up. Oh, hopefully I don't break my webcam here. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, guys, for coming. Okay, so don't forget about um, don't forget about the art venture. Really consider it. It's going to be a lot of fun. All those girls are so talented. And don't forget about Lee Moore's class next. Um, I believe it is on February twenty fifth. This is I think it's a Tuesday. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Anybody have any questions before I? head on out you could really use any color paint too you could use a gray paint too or add some stamping Prima's got some so cute those little two dollar stamps just add so much texture to the background <laughs> you guys are funny Yes, some good deserved dreams. Yes. My daughter was sick last night. Oh, thank you, Laura. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. You're welcome. Thank you so much for supporting me again. I really appreciate it. I did record. Yes. Woohoo! I recorded it so you can um, you can watch it later. I know you guys are the chatty cats. All right, awesome. I know I have it a little bit short. We have about five minutes left, so but you can spend that time chatting. Look at my hands, are a mess. Yeah, she d she is feeling better, Delina. Thank you, thank you, Carrie. When's my next lesson? <laughs> Whenever you want it to be, girlfriend. I'm here for you. 
I got lots of tricks up my sleeve. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are so sweet. Anybody else have any questions before I head out? Thanks, Misty. If she will. <laughs> I can come back on. Yes, I will. I would be delighted. I would be so happy. I did rock it with time to spare. I'm a pretty fast scrapper. Uh, once, once an idea comes into my mind, I kind of just bring it all together pretty quick. I got two little ones, and time is of the essence. It was a little nerve-wracking. I was afraid my webcam was going to fail me. <laughs> or my microphone. I had to use a microphone tonight. All right. All right, sounds good, girls. Well, thank you so much for coming. I so appreciate all of you. Please stop by my blog or my Facebook page. Uh, my Facebook page is, I have a fan page. You can search me um, through that. It's Adrian Ford, Coloring My World. Uh, you can like my page. You can find all the updates. Um, I put color palettes that I enjoy, um, just to share a bunch of my Prima projects, upcoming events, things that I'm doing, things that I'm thinking about. Um, <clears throat> and you can visit my blog. It is bry and i at blogspot.com. Brian I. Bry and I. Because my husband's name is Brian. Okay, great. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you.